Hi, you guys. Happy Waste Feed Wednesday. So today I'm going to be doing a video about waste feeds, but also I'm going to be just giving you guys an update on what I have going on right now. My website is currently down and I just kind of wanted to talk about really what's been going on with me and my waist speeds and what we can look forward to in 2023. First thing that I wanna say is thank you to every person, men and women, that have supported my waist speeds. Thank you guys so much. I've had my website for seven years now. So yeah, it's been a while. And I took my website down because I plan to write a blog. My blog was going to be about my healing journey after losing my parents. And it was going to be called, They Will Never See My Scars. And it was going to talk about the aftermath of July 28th, which is when I lost my parents and how I feel afterwards, so the aftermath of that. This summer has been hard. It's been very challenging. This is also the last summer of me in my 20s. So after this summer, I will no longer be in my 20s. So that to me basically means that I will no longer be considered a young adult, right? I'll just be a regular adult. However, I feel that I've been an adult since I was 17 and I was preparing to graduate high school. I believe that once I started preparing to exit high school, I became an adult through that transition. I started selling waist beads at 16. I was in the 10th grade. And when I started selling waist beads, it was because so many girls would ask me to make some for them. And I would do it thinking that this was something I actually enjoyed doing. But I want to share why I started making waist beads for myself. So when I was 10 years old, or I was nine, about to be 10, I received my pair of waist beads from my mom's friend from Liberia. And Auntie Eva gave me beads and she helped me put them on. And she told me that my mother would want me to have them. During that time, I talk about this on my blogs, but I'm now talking about this so you guys can hear it from my mouth. At that time, I was not around people that would speak positively about my mother. A lot of the things that I wanted to know about my mother, I would have to rely on a spiritual message because there would be times where people would say things about my mother that I would feel was untrue. And it was because she was gone and I was a baby that they thought I would never know because they're thinking you were a baby when she died. So there's no way you could have known that this is not the truth. So they would tell me things thinking that I wouldn't know the difference, but I would feel the difference and I would feel people lying about the woman my mother was. And when I would be around people who would talk about her positively, as a young girl, it meant a lot. I'm back. So it meant a lot to me as a young girl when Auntie Eva told me that my mom would want me to have this. And I didn't 
really understand what way speeds were. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. You know what, we're just gonna let the tears out because people say that, you know, crying is a form of release or whatever. Um, it's also something I never really spoke about. So I think that's why I'm so emotional about it because I'm finally speaking about it rather than typing it. When she gave me that bead, when my aunt gave me that bead, that was my way of connecting with my mother. And I trusted my aunt, I trusted my auntie Eva because I knew that she loved my mother and I knew that she actually was a friend of my mother. So I trusted what she said and um, she was there. She was there at my first birthday party. She was there for my brother's birthday party. So she was there. So anyway, I ended up breaking my first pair of waist beads. So you guys know waist beads do break. I never thought I would ever see another pair of waist beads again. I thought that this was like some magical thing and I just thought it was over for me and waist beads. After about five years, waist beads came back into my life from another friend from the Liberia, which is interesting because my aunt that gave me the waist beads, she gave it to me, I believe in 2004 and my niece, who is also from Liberia, or she's half Liberian, was born the next year. So I always like relate when I first started wearing waist beads to my niece's life because like it was around the same time. I got older, I grew up, and my friend Rose, 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 shout out to Rose, shout out to Rose. Rose had beads on and she had like a bunch of them on and she told me that she gets it at this African store. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like I definitely wanna go and check it out. So I ended up going to the African store and ironically, we both went to the same African store. I just didn't know they had beads. And so, um, you know, I bought I bought the beads and um, I bought all his beads. And so after that, I was like obsessed. And then I would go to the African store. I'd be like, you got more beads? You got more beads? And he um, didn't. <laughs> so then one day I told Rose, I said, yeah, they don't have any more beads. She's like, girl, just make your own. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, girl, look, I made mine. Look, I made this one. I made this one. So um, that's what I did. I started making them. And then I went to school and I showed all my friends. And I was like, look what I made. And they're like, oh, make me one. My waist piece didn't turn into a business until five years after that. That's when I created my website. So I was 16 ultimately when I started making them and I finally created my website, I believe I was 21. Yeah, at 21. At 21 was when I officially started my website. And I'm so grateful and thankful for, you know, just the support. Like I, I just appreciate the support, but I noticed that things are different for me now. Um, first of all, waist beads are more trendy now. So that has been a little bit challenging for me as someone who believes in the tradition and culture behind it. I have been having to compete with people who see it as a trend. And I believe that my core supporters, they love my authenticity. But 
this is a reflection of some of the things that I dealt with in life, like being an adult orphan, being an orphan, being a minor orphan, being a ward of the state, being in the system as a ward of the state. Waste beads served as a protection for me from a lot of things, from a lot of things. And although my life has not been easy since my parents passed, I have my waist beads to thank for things not happening to me. My mother was such a beautiful woman and she is someone that I admire and even though she's not here anymore, I wanted to do something that would always honor her spirit. But then when I moved, I realized it's time to honor her spirit in another way. The way speeds just wasn't doing it like it used to do it. And so that is why I took my website down. I'm doing a face-to-face -face video instead of blogging because I don't know when I'm gonna bring my website back up, but part of me taking my website down was because of how personal waste beads are to me and it is a business. And I am trying to figure out if I want to personalize this business. It means so much to me that people supported me the way they did, but I really don't like when people use waste beads as a way to insult me or weaponize me because it has ultimately been a protective tool and a healing tool for me as an orphan. And so I almost feel exposed by showing people how I was able to gain the power that I was able to gain throughout all the years. I basically showed my hand, I showed my, my sword, I showed my weakness. I don't think I want to do that anymore. I've had to gain strength in other ways, in other areas, and it's not about my waist beads anymore. I mean, I still wear waist beads, but that's not where my strength is anymore. Um, that is not what I use as my tool for strength anymore. But I want my waist beads to be a tool for women, to help them heal, to protect them, to help them manifest, to help them get what they want out of their life, uh, to create just better opportunities. There are so many things that waist beads can do for you that you will not see, but you will feel it. You will know. I want to leave with this and say I will Never stop making them for women because I know the importance of having someone intentionally make things like waist beads for you to heal or for you to be protected or for you to be blessed. So for me to be as authentic as I am when it comes to this business, I never want to exclude women from the opportunity of getting an authentic piece of jewelry that can ultimately enhance their life. So I will always take orders. How I'm gonna be taking those orders, I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. But right now, what I want to focus on is healing from my parents' death and overcoming the struggles of an adult orphan. So I wrote a children's book 
birds in the sky. I'm hoping to put it out. And when I put it out, I will do an event and I will have voice speeds there. And so, you know, with the book will come beats, more books, more beats. And I, I can't wait for you guys to see it and read it. And I put my heart and soul into it. I will go into detail, but that's for another conversation. If you would like to order, you can DM me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, that's all I'm on right now. I don't think YouTube has a way for you to message people, but just comment, okay? And then I'm also gonna include my Cash App and GoFundMe and my PayPal in case you guys wanna support me during this time. I'm still going through it, still out in these streets. And, um, you know, I'm really trying to combat homelessness.